Join us, friends. Great Scott Spot Guy. Do they know what we have in store for them? They will if they tighten up. And don't double dribble. To the Grey Ghost Spot Guy? Exactly, old chum. No time to waste. To the Grey Ghost. We have not a minute to spare. It's showtime, friends. All right, all right, all right. It is the Spot Guy, and it is... Globe trotting with Shrey. And we are not wishing Cotton was a monkey, but we know that there's people that are. Are you? I am absolutely not wishing a oh, Cotton, I'm not asking you, wishing Scott, Cotton was a monkey. I'm asking if the person listening to this is. <laughs> right. so, so, uh, but you pointed at me, though, Trey. So, no, I so no at that. I'm not wishing. I did point at you, but I also pointed So, we'll it. both point. Yeah, That's there we it. Go. I'm pointing at y'all. All right. So, Friends, this episode, we're going to talk about what it is like in Europe. Uh, I was fortunate enough to go to Europe, and I visited several different countries. I was actually playing music in a band, um, and it was an Elvis-related thing. Um, and I was very lucky to do that, and I ended up breaking off from the band and filming on my own, and I was able to travel to a lot of different places. And my biggest apprehension going was, uh, for instance, I was going to be going to Germany. And what I expected to happen was I expected a whole lot of, we want to see your papers, that kind of stuff. So I had a friend and Trey, let, let's, let's, let me jump back to you. Have you ever been to Europe? I have not. Have you been out of the United States? I have not. Not even Mexico or Canada? Nope. Man, we got to change that. <laughs> um, so I'm going to be going, uh, and we'll talk about this later in the year, but I'm actually taking a major trip later this year. And uh, I don't want to divulge what it is yet, but it is very, very exciting. And I'm actually studying for that trip yeah. now, but we'll talk about that in a, in a new episode, in another episode. So when I went, I had a friend that came over. You could find this video, Chris, and I really can't pronounce his real name. But I know him as Chris. It's like uh, Christoph Nelpaski, I believe, is the proper pronunciation of his name. But Christoph contacted me and said, y'all are having a, um, an eclipse. And the best place to see it, or one of the best places, is in Tennessee. So I want to come visit you from Poland. Hmm. And I want to watch the eclipse with you. And I said, great. So he brought his family. They came from Poland. You can find the, the video on the spa guy um, and on YouTube. And uh, Chris brought his family and we watched the eclipse together. And I filmed it. I even had the drone in the air, the glory flying when the eclipse happened. So I called it. And I mean, man, it went basically pitch dark like it was nighttime. And uh, for just minutes, it was it was pretty incredible. But Chris came and we experienced that together. And after that, he told me, uh, you know, if you ever come to Europe, make sure that you reach out and we'll try to do something together. And Chris, by the way, is over all of the radio stations in Poland. Wow. Very, very nice guy. Uh, he's a good friend, has been a, a faithful friend. And what he offered to do for me at the time, I didn't even realize what it was as far as what what kind of sacrifice it was going to be for him. Okay. Right. So what he said was when, when he found out that I was going to be coming and doing that tour uh, in Europe, he said, Billy, do you have any days off? And I said, yeah, I've got two days off that are together. We're going to be in the Netherlands. He mm -hmm. said, well, I will drive to the Netherlands and pick you up and take you to Germany to see all the Elvis stuff in Germany. That's a pretty nice thing for somebody to do for you. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. And it sounds good. So you think, okay, so he's driving over here. He's going to take me to Germany. And uh, and that's a pretty cool sacrifice. What he didn't tell me was he drove 13 hours mm -hmm. from Poland to pick me up. And then we drove about four and a half to five hours to all of the Elvis stuff. We stayed overnight. And then he brought me back the next day. Um, yeah, he brought me back the next afternoon. So basically it was two days. And we went and filmed the stuff in Bad Homburg, uh, Bad Noham, or Bad Noheim, um, uh, Friedrichsburg. I filmed all of the stuff. The only place that I didn't get to was where 
uh, Elvis did his tank training and his uh, army training and stuff where he met Elizabeth. I didn't get to that that town, which is called um, uh, the way it's pronounced, looks nothing like the way it's written out, the way it's spelled, and it's escaping me right this. That's moment, where maybe. they were at the movie theater. At the movie theater. So, do you remember what that's called? It's uh, Grafenhauer is what. That's it's her called. town, right? In Grafenveer is what it's called. That is, yeah, okay. And uh, but it's spelled. It looks like Grafenhauer, but they pronounce it Grafenveer. Okay. And uh, so that was where she was in the movie. He was in the movie theater, and she waited for him a couple of nights, and they started dating. I did not get to go there, and I also um, ended up actually driving back again by myself later. So anyway, I told you all that to tell you this. We started out when we flew in. I flew in with uh, one of the guys that was with Elvis in the Imperials. Um, Jim, uh, is Jim's name going to going to escape me? Uh, what is Jim's name, Trey? Um, um uh, guys, come on, Billy. Jim, I'll look it up. He's in my phone. Just start with an M. Jim Murray. You're right. Oh, Thank yeah. you. You got it. And uh, boy, that helped. Just that M helped. I knew it was so enough. Jim Murray and I flew from Nashville. Jim lives here as well. And we flew from Nashville to, I think, New York. And we flew then from New York to Denmark. And then we flew from Denmark to Finland. And when we flew to Finland, the first place that we stayed was Helsinki. And when I think, when I hear the name Helsinki, it think it makes me think of a Japanese town. Yeah, me too. Like Hiroshima or yeah, yeah, yeah. that kind of thing. But Helsinki is actually in Finland. And you got to consider now, I have never been to Europe before. The only place that I'd ever been out of the United States is I have been to Cancun, Mexico. Mm -hmm. And I've been to the Bahamas. Um, but other than that, I've never even been across the border at Canada. We've been close. You remember me and you were in Detroit, and it's just across the bridge. Yeah, we were and I actually, I'm telling you wrong. I, I actually, it just dawned on me, I actually played music. I was um, supporting my Christian album that I put out, opening for a band called Jackson Heights, and we played in New Brunswick, Canada, Yeah, I which remember. is the easternmost part you remember me doing that you said that you had to uh you had some problems at customs yeah and it's really bizarre i had a harder time getting into canada it just hit me on that trip but of course we were on a tour bus you know it was just the band and and myself and a bus driver and we had to go and we went with the intent about two o'clock in the morning and most people that live on the east coast know what i-95 is so if you could imagine, I-95 literally ends at the custom station in Canada. That's the end of the road. The highway actually stops at that building right there in the United States. So we went to that building, and I remember going in, and um, I thought the guy was really, really tall that was the customs officer. But what it was is he was standing on something, so he's looking down on you. You know, I remember looking at him at a desk and I went in with uh, two other guys. I think it was Alan and Alan O'Neill and um, and man, I'm, I'm struggling with names right now. But two of the guys that are in the band, uh, two of the main guys. And uh, and I'm sorry. Uh, uh, <laughs> to your bandmates. <laughs> yeah, to, to the band member. I, I'm your name is escaping me, too. And, uh, boy, I'm really, really struggling today. And for those of you that are watching the video, I'm searching through my um, my phone trying to find it. Kent Humphrey is the other guy's name. And so Kent, it was Kent and myself and Alan O'Neill. Now, they were representing the band, and I was representing me. So what they wanted to know was how many CDs we had to sell and that kind of stuff when we went across the border. And that kind of stuff. And I remember it being such a low number that the guy said, that's not going to make enough difference. It's not worth the paperwork. Y'all just go. So we went across there. But that's the only time that I've been. I had forgotten about Canada, but I was actually playing music then as well. We went and we were in Canada for uh, about uh, from my from my memory, we did three shows there. So I think it was three days. OK. And I remember seeing the longest uh, covered bridge. You remember the wooden covered bridge, the longest one in the world. I, we passed by it somewhere they, we were playing out there. 
but I've actually have videos of me in New Brunswick, Canada with Jackson Heights on my YouTube channel as well. And so anyway, let's get back to Europe. So we go to Finland and I remember being, what we did was we met up with the rest of the band in Denmark and then we flew to Finland and we went to Helsinki and we checked in a hotel in Helsinki. I remember it very well. I can remember that day like it was yesterday, right directly across the street was a schoolhouse. And I remember out my hotel room window seeing school kids out there just playing on the playground. Hmm. And it wasn't your typical schoolhouse like we think of in the States. It was a really old looking, almost like a church building. And it was all paved where they were at. They were like on a basketball court, like a giant one that was all paved and they were playing on that. Um, and that's in, I've got videos of all that that I put out. But somebody that was coming, uh, the guy that was running the tour had people that were in Finland that would come and help us do the tour, kind of usher us around. So one of those guys came, his name was uh, Jerry. And I think it was Jerry that told me this. And Jerry said, you know, there's two album covers uh, that are bootleg Elvis records that were sold here in Finland. And on the album covers, they have Elvis in Finland, in front of these famous places. One of them was in front of the train station in Helsinki. So he actually took me to the train station, and I did a video about that, where on the album cover, Elvis is standing in front of that train station. <laughs> but that never happened. Elvis was never in Helsinki, Finland. Um, but the what I remember about Europe, just this is just a blanket statement about Europe overall, was that the accommodations, the hotels were just beautiful. All of them were really nice. And they had unusual things that you don't see in the States. One of them is a lot of them, and some of the States are doing this now, but most of them had a thing where when you walked in the room, you took your card that you got in the door with and you stuck it in a slot. And when you did that, it turned the lights and stuff on in your room. Oh, okay. That way it could conserve electricity. And when you flipped a light switch on, you would hear a relay click. In the United States, we don't use relays in breaker boxes. We just have a breaker on and there's always electricity. Theirs, they have low voltage that is used for the switch and it closes a relay and turns a light on. So you literally hear when you're flipping lights on and off, you literally hear the breakers clicking in the breaker box that's in your room. And turn on. And yeah, so that well, was something saving, that's- That's saving energy? Yeah, because if you don't have the card in, all the lights and everything are out in the room. So when you why go in we, and stick your card in. So wouldn't that save us money here? Yeah, and I, I have seen hotels do it here, but there almost every hotel did it. Here, I've seen it occasionally. So it's not been adapted here like it was like it was done there. But that's one thing that stuck out to me. Um. And I actually got out and walked around in Helsinki. And I remember that there was a, I walked down to where that bus station is, which was not far from the hotel. And as I mentioned, I, everything that I'm talking about, I filmed. And you can go back and find the videos. The long version I put on the weekly spa guy, which is my second channel. And I did that. I actually did, I don't know how many sets. I'm going to say there's six or seven blocks of four hours so there's there's four hours here four one hour shows and then there's four one hour shows and there's four one hour shows and i think there's six or seven of those so there's a lot of hours of shows me just walking around and showing you things that i saw that stuck out to me as unusual and there was a casino that i walked by but it's not your traditional casino like you think of here either it was you know, here you you think of a giant casino building like in Las Vegas. There, you're just in town and there's a sign that says casino. And you walk in that building and it's a casino. And next to it is a McDonald's. You know, it's just a building. And uh, there was a lot of those casinos I saw around uh, all over that country. And also in, uh, in the Netherlands, I saw a lot of casinos like that. And um, even I used a casino in Breda, Netherlands, to show you, to prove to you where the colonel was house, where he was born at. Because there was a building that was not a casino back then, that's a casino now, that's in a photo of, of the back of his house from 100 years ago. Wow. And uh, which is pretty cool. And the building is still there and it's a casino now. Now, didn't the colonel there in Breda, didn't he live close to the water? Mm-hmm. 
Yes, but um, Breda actually means wide river in in Dutch. So they're on a wide river, but but I think you're thinking of Rotterdam, which is where he moved to as a teenager to live with his aunt and uncle and work at the shipyard. And that's where he left to go. So the river at Breda, you could use a boat to go to Rotterdam. Rotterdam, you could go to the ocean. That's where the, the ocean liners would leave and go to the United States. So did you go to the place there too? Didn't you, did you cover both of them? Like, did you absolutely? Find okay. Yeah. Cause I'm, I'm, I'm seeing something in my brain. Like yeah. where it skimmed. But and that's a different country right now. We're in Finland. So if you imagine, yeah. I'm going to try to point it out to you the way I remember it in my brain, Russia is here mm. and I, it's going to be backwards on the screen. So just imagine Russia's here right next to it's Finland below that, or uh, there's a, a big body of water here. Uh, what is over here? It is where Jerry Sheff lived at, at that time, the bass player. Um, Norway is on the other side of the water. Below Norway is uh, Denmark. To the left of Denmark is, and to the left and kind of up is the Netherlands. and Or actually to the left and down would be Netherlands. To the right would be Germany. Then below that would be... Um, Below the Netherlands would be uh, Belgium. Below that would be France. Hmm. So I know that doesn't make sense unless you're looking at a map. But the only reason I remember those things is because it actually literally helps, as Trey and I have said before, to go somewhere. If I'm looking at things on a map, they don't mean anything to me. If I go there and then look at them on a map, it's like, oh, this is here, that's there. It all starts making sense. And the reason that I know Belgium is below the Netherlands and France is below that is because I took the train from the Netherlands to Paris and we went through Belgium. And so it's just little things like that that stick with you. But anyway, let's let's go back to Finland. So I spent a lot. Of, we stayed at a lot of different places in Finland. We played many, many different towns and all of them had really, really nice. I would say um, I would guess that their government run um auditoriums if you will to play in and when i'm saying nice i'm talking about primo something like you would see in new york city but maybe even better hmm. and just really nice now they weren't giant uh i think the biggest one we played at was about 1500 seats but most of them were 500 to maybe 900 seats but nice stages nice stuff and then they they uh they did they provided what they call backline and we're, we're talking band lingo now. So when we show up, I'll play bass in this band. My bass amp and everything is sitting there with the cable or, or without a cable. Most of the time they would have a cable. I just plug my bass in. And then when I leave, I leave it there and they load it. So I, I bring my bass in and I'm ready to play. That's and uh, so they would provide you, but you would ask for the kind of amp that you wanted. And when you got there, it was there. And I, I asked for an Ampeg. And every gig that I played, there was an Ampeg amp sitting there. And uh, so that was a lot of fun. But anyway, we played, we stayed there, but we did not play in. Um, I think we stayed overnight and got up the next day and drove to a town called uh, Olu. O-U-L-O. O-U-L-U, I think is right. Mm -hmm. Olu. Olu. And uh, that may not be right, but I think that's right. And this little town was on the water. And they say it's really close to Russia, relatively close to Russia. Okay. So it was on the water. And this was, uh, this would have been in, I think we went in April, maybe. Um, let me, let, let me look at my phone and I'll be able to tell you, I don't want to, I don't want to tell you wrong because what I was going to say is, it's O U L U. Yep. Which is in. So that was April 19th that we arrived in Olu. And evidently we flew from, I'm looking now because I'm in the airport in Olu. So evidently, and you see it says Olu Airport right there, O U L U. Yep. And it says April 19th. So. 
they had some really cool things, and I've done videos about this. But where we were at was where the, the hotel that we stayed in, which was a really, really nice hotel, by the way. Um, looking out my hotel room window, you could see this. Because in April, the thaw was just happening. It was still frozen. And it freezes so much there that that water that's out there is actually frozen over and you can walk on it. <laughs> and I went out there to the left of where this photo is at, actually to the left, to the other side of where that photo was at. They were having, I saw some people out there trying to dig. There was a hole in the ice. There was a, uh, like a dock. And there was a hole in the ice that there was a girl and some people there and they were trying to dig uh, a chair or something out of a hole in the ice. And I walked up and just, cause I'm filming, you know, and I said, what, what are y'all doing? And she said, well, um, I do a game show and the game show was shot here and we're trying to clean up after the game show. And I said, what do you mean a game show? She said, well, it's on YouTube. And I was trying to think of, um, um, what it's called, I think it was called Ice Hole. Um, is it, it's Ice Hole? What is the uh, show that the 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 rich people do where they try to buy into your idea? Um, um, somebody's yelling at the at the radio right now. I was now. about to say, let's make a deal, but no, that's something else. It's no, like, you know what I'm talking about. Yeah. With, well, uh, Mr. Mark Wonderful Cuban. and yeah. Mark Cuban and all them. What's that called? Mm. Oh, man. We're blind. Anyway, uh, I, I don't want to get off on that too much because I don't want to lose my train of thought. But basically, the idea is, is a person comes to pitch their, their business idea, but they have to stand in that water, in the ice hole, and and pitch their idea. OK, so they have to try to stand there and get somebody to buy their idea while they're in that that water. And sure enough, I looked on YouTube and the episodes that were shot in Olu in that ice hole out in the harbor were on there where people were standing there trying to pitch these business ideas. But it was ice hole something. And um, but anyway, I, that's one of the things I saw. Another Shark thing tank. that I saw. Huh? Shark tank. Shark tank. So it was it was like ice hole shark tank. But that's now, I remember watching your videos. I remember you you out there and seeing people get in the and that's the business card thing that I was talking about where you put that in to make the lights work. Oh, you yeah. have to stick it in there and leave it in there, and then the lights come on. You see it that? Turns on. Okay. Yeah. And uh, so I wanted to show you it activates the whole room. So another thing was that I thought was very interesting is uh, this policeman. And this policeman stands in the harbor real close to where the ice hole was. And uh, let me find him because I want to show you a picture. And if you haven't seen this stuff, make sure you go to my channel and you can watch this. But here he is right here. It's just a real fat policeman. And he stands right there overlooking the harbor. I remember And that. I've got videos of me by that. And it's just a beautiful little town. I really enjoyed the town. I walked all over the town. I went in churches that were really, really old. There's a castle there that was kind of like a fortress that's like from the 16 or 1700s from my memory. It might be older than that. There was churches there I went in. And every town that I went to, I tried to spend time going and seeing the local stuff. Um, another place that we went in Finland, and by the way, Finland is where saunas would be made at. So every hotel you went to generally would have a sauna or have something of that nature. And we went and stayed at another place, and I cannot think of the name of the town, but it was where I did a video where I went into Hesburger, which is a copy of McDonald's, by the way. But instead of ketchup, they use mayonnaise. So over there, they give you uh, French fries with mayonnaise instead of French fries with ketchup. But I wanted to experience McDonald's, by the way, and I did go to some McDonald's, and it tastes exactly like it does here. Exactly. I opened the burger up and show you on the video and it looks exactly like that. But I also wanted to go to Hess Burger. So I went to Hess Burger and there was a young man there on a bicycle and he went in in front of me and I couldn't tell how old he was, but I figured he was 13, 14, 15. And I turned out to be right. And he was in front of me and he tried to buy food. And when he used his credit card, his debit card, it wouldn't work. So I just, when he kind of dropped his head down and started walking away, I said, hey, come back. 
and I bought his lunch. And then I, I basically interviewed him and asked him about school and about what it was like going to school. And his name was Tomas, Tomas. And um, so I really enjoyed my time there. But what I was going to tell you is that hotel in Finland, they also make elevators in Finland. That, that company, what's it called, um, that you see a lot of the elevators, if you see them, uh, they are made real close to where we were staying at this hotel. And the, the, the city escapes me. A lot of these cities, the names are so hard to even pronounce that Olu's easy, Helsinki's easy. The rest of them were, were more than I could, could put in my memory. But there I went to see the high-speed trains. I went to the train museum. But our hotel had this thing where they were actually filming a music video there. And they were doing it outside of my hotel room door. And uh, so I actually interacted with them. And I show you in some of the videos, the music video. And then when you went through the back, there was this tunnel that went, or it was not a tunnel, it was a bridge that was covered because it's cold there. And uh, they had bicycles that they provided, but it, had, it warmed up, but there was still snow on the ground in a lot of places. But anyway, you go through that tunnel and you go to the other side and over there, man, they had uh, indoor swimming pool, they had saunas, they had um, just a ton of things that you would think about, that you would associate with Finland. Right. Um, another thing that they had that really stuck out to me was no air conditioner or heater in your room. They had, uh, and I shouldn't say no heat. There may have been heaters. I didn't need them, but they had no air conditioners in your room, but they had this giant thing that looked like a door that was about that wide, but it was probably eight feet tall. And if you opened it, there was louvers with the screen over it. So you could get outside air because it was cold outside. That was your air conditioner. Oh, so you would literally open that. So Excellent. critters couldn't get through and that kind of stuff. But that's the way the rooms were. I don't remember any of them around there having air conditioners in the rooms. They're saving money, aren't they? Well, they didn't need air conditioners. There was no use for them because right. it stayed cool year round. Yeah. The lights, no air conditions, conditioners. But that was Finland. So Finland really stuck out to me. And let me let me try to think of that um that elevator manufacturer in Finland. And uh, I'll tell you real quick because. Uh, How long did you stay out there? I was in Finland. We probably stayed in Finland. I'm going to say. Eight days. Yeah. Something like that. And when I tell you the elevator manufacturer, y'all will recognize it. It is uh, Cone, K-O-N-E. Y'all have seen the Cone elevators. You'll see the name Cone on the elevators, and I think they do escalators too. So we left Finland and we went to Denmark. We only stayed in Denmark one day. And in Denmark, we stayed at an Airbnb, which was a really, really old house in this uh, beautiful little town. And in that town... Um, you were able to, basically there was a church in the middle of town with a big brick fence around it, kind of round. And so when you went to town, you drive around the church and it would jut off into the different streets for the different town. And when we're talking about a town, I'm not talking about a city. I'm talking about just a little town in a, a little farm town in a rural, a rural area. And by the way, we flew into Copenhagen. And I'm sure most of you have heard the name Copenhagen. Um, they even have Copenhagen snuff, right? That's what I'm thinking. But the way that they pronounce Copenhagen is Copenhagen. It's not Copenhagen, it's Copenhagen. 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 Real fast. And uh, so I had to try to learn a lot of these words because the way they are spelled, the way they look is not at all the way that they're uh, pronounced. And so Copenhagen was another one of them. And the reason I say Breda is because they would correct me. I would always say Breda. And they say, no, it's Breda. And uh, so, but that's a different country altogether. So now we're in Denmark. We're at this um, really old country home that the guys restored and turned into an Airbnb. And it was large enough to accommodate all of us, the whole band, which was, there was a lot of us. And so we had bedrooms upstairs. They had, uh, and we would eat supper there. They fixed breakfast. It was really nice. And I do videos where I show you that. I talk to the owner of the place and about, about how they uh, how it became an Airbnb and him restoring it and all that. It's just a beautiful, beautiful old home. 
So I decided to go into town and there's that church that's in the middle of town. From my memory, part of the church was built in the 1600s and part in the 1700s. So I went to that church and we're looking around and something that struck me that's very different than the United States. And the people that are listening to this that are from Europe, this probably doesn't seem odd to you at all. But to us in the United States, it seems very odd. So we're walking around the church and remember there's a brick wall and the brick wall is not very tall. It may be two and a half feet tall. Not, not even, I don't think it's even three feet tall, maybe, but not, it wasn't a, a fence to try to keep you out. It was just a, a border, if you will. And I noticed up against the fence was tombstone headstones. Like they would be staggered. Like there'd be one right at the fence and one here and one, they were staggered like that. Then out in the middle between there and the church where the grass is, there was graves with the headstone. And way, the way it was explained to me is when you die, they put you in a coffin and they bury you in the grass part for 20 years. Then they dig you up. I guess they take what's left of you and put you in a small box and move you to the wall. Okay. <laughs> and uh, so... You only get 20 years out here, and then they move you, and they move your headstone to the wall. So they're doing that's, that They're doing that right now. Yeah, that's Come not up. a thing in the United States. When you buy a plot, that's your plot forever and ever, amen. You know, I don't know how that even ends, because that's relatively modern. And even when we find an old graveyard, we try to um, try to preserve it, put a fence around it, at least do some upkeep even if there's no money to do that with, you know, now graveyards have to put a, or cemeteries have to put, put money to aside in perpetuity to keep the grass cut and that kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. So I don't know how that ever ends. You know, if you run out of space and you can't sell any more graves, who's paying then, you know, so I don't, I don't really know how that works, but that just struck me as odd. The other thing we did is we went into a town that was a, 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 a city that had the oldest building in Denmark there from the 1300s. It was still in use today. And it was in a line of other buildings. It was like in a city block. And something that struck me was the guy that was with me told me a story that the harbor now is being used. But at one time, they filled the harbor in with trash, hmm. just completely filled it up with trash. And it was not used anymore. And then they went, you know what? We probably should use that. Then they dug all the trash out and they cleaned the harbor out and it was back in use again, which was just a bizarre concept. What, they would dump their trash there? Or? I don't know, but he said, the way he explained it to me was uh, maybe that was the landfill and they were just using the harbor as the landfill and then decided to clean it up at some point. Can you imagine what that would have smelled like being right in town? Man, Why? And there was old churches. Every town that we went into, there was giant churches. Or if it was a big town, there was giant churches. If it was an old, a uh, small town, it was a small church, smaller churches. But uh, every town that I drove by, there was a church kind of at the center of that town. Uh, in the big town that I was talking about, where they filled in the, um, uh, where they filled in, and let me see if I can can find the name of that town. But where they filled in the um, uh, the the harbor, that town yeah, I'm gonna look that up and see maybe they have photos of it. And this is the church, by the way, in the small town. Oh, and okay. actually, in yeah. the video, I go up in this church where the bell is, the original bell that's automated now. It has automation on it where it'll automatically ring. A person <laughs> doesn't have to go up there and ring it anymore. And um, the name of that town is Tageskov. T-A-G-E-S-K-O-V is the town with the church. Now, the town that was the oldest town is this town. Navstead, N A E S T V E D. Yes, and this Navstead, and this is one of the churches in that town. Yeah, that's just so, beautiful. Yeah, look at yeah. that. Wow. And uh, it was just fascinating because in America, to find something that's even from the 1700s is hard to do. There, there's things out there, but there's not much. 
there, it was nothing to run into something that was 1300s, 1400s, 1500s, 1600s, 1700s. I mean, old stuff. And I really enjoyed my time in Denmark, but we only stayed overnight. The next day we got up and we flew to, um, we flew to the Netherlands, which some people call that Holland, but it's really not Holland. The Netherlands are states or provinces, and two of the provinces are North and South Holland. Uh, and one of those would be where Amsterdam is, but most people would still call that area Holland. So when you hear about the colonel, they always say he was born in Holland, but technically Breda is not in Holland. It's not in North or South Holland. It's in another province. So we ended up going there to a town called Eindhoven, E-I-N-D-H-E. O V E N. <laughs> and Eindhoven is where the compact disc was invented. Oh, okay. Um, yep, yeah, it's Philips, P H I L I P S. You've seen that on TVs and compact disc players and all that. And they are a place that's way ahead of their time as far as uh, electronic inventions and things of, those na of that nature. They claim to have, uh, I've got a video where I go into the Philips Museum. And they claim to invented the light bulb, but we know that Edison did it, and uh, before the, before they did it, but they make a claim to it. They also invented the. Um, uh, I think they're responsible for the cassette, if I believe the the tape cassette, and all kinds of other stuff. And I'm not taking away from Phillips; they did some amazing stuff. Um, but they claimed the light bulb, and I just I protest that. But the rest of the stuff. When you go in the museum, the things that they created are, are unbelievable. They even um, have a three, and I never made it to the bridge, but they have a bridge there that is 3D printed. They actually 3D printed parts and built a bridge and uh, different stuff like that. So it's a real high tech community. And we stayed there and played there at a place called. Hmm. Mm -hmm. Um. Yeah. Got to go to that phone again. Yeah, I'm going to have to go to the phone. And um, Eindhoven. In that museum, did they show how they made the discs? Uh, no, but that was there. And I'm sure they did. I just didn't see it. I didn't take all that in. But Eindhoven, they had, um, and to give you an idea about all the things I filmed in Europe, there's 10 full SD cards, five hours each. Yeah. Tell and them that, how you were. I, I got 13 of them plus two small ones that I flew my, the glory and guys, I was terrified trying to make sure that I did not lose those things before I got back to the United States. I was, did, I was very, very scared about and you it. You keep them in a bag and. Yep. Kept them on me <laughs> in, in case my room got broken into or something of that nature. Yeah. I didn't want to take a chance with any of it. So you kept them on you at, at all times. Yes, because I was just terrified. Now something, uh, something that's cool that uh, that I got to eat in Eindhoven is is this. They had really good coffee, and they had these things called Stroop waffles. Okay, and I would eat Stroop waffles every day for breakfast, and it's kind of like a um, it's kind of like a waffle, but it's really hard, and it's got like strawberry between it. And, uh, and you could dip those in your coffee. It was really, really good. There were so many things that were, um, that were really nice about, about Eindhoven. And I don't know why this thing's trying to play a, a, a song. What in the world? You know, Tulsa, that's Tulsa James coming through. Yeah. It's, it was one of those things where I would say to, uh, it was called the FNR. So yeah. if you look up the FNR, that was the first place that we played there and you see it's called the Elvis concert. So we played there <clears throat> and I ended up after I left the band and went back to stay by myself, I stayed in Eindhoven really close to the FNR where I could see, I could almost see the train station from my hotel room so I could go travel. And I went all over Europe and I could see that we're going to run out of time on this one, but we'll finish up with a couple of things and we'll talk about, because I've got so much stuff that happened in um in the netherlands because i spent weeks in the netherlands filming every single day traveling by train 
uh, going and visiting different people. And it was very fascinating. But let's go back to, I've got a little thing that I did. Um, so let's let's go back to the FNR. We, we go and play at the FNR. And it was a, uh, a really nice venue. Every place that we played had just excellent venues. As I mentioned before, in every country, all of them were just top notch. But I don't think the FNR was a government run thing. I think that was a private uh, uh, venue, if you will. And a lot of these places had multiple uh, venues inside of them. So you could have 10 different bands playing of different sizes inside that. But every, almost every single one of these, by the way, what's funny is you could take the same group of people and do concerts in the United States and nobody would show up. Yeah. You do them in Europe and every so every show was sold out. Every one of them. And I think on that particular tour, there was 29 shows, all of them sold out. And so it's just a different world over there. They really embrace, um, they really, really, really embrace music for one thing. And they appreciate people that go and try to spend time uh, doing music and try to spend time um, uh, entertaining. They, they really appreciate that and will show up for it. Now, something that I did encounter in the Netherlands was gypsies. Mm. Okay. But you, you know what? I'm telling you wrong. Let's, let's talk about that real quick before I forget it. We encountered gypsies in Finland. Oh, okay. Um, I'm sure that it was in Finland. And when I say gypsies, um, and I'm sure that it was in Finland and it's in some of the videos, but when I say gypsies, I'm talking about, um, they all wore these dresses that had kind of like, you remember in the 1700s where they would show you that they would wear a bustle under their dress, yeah. like around their butt to make the, a lot of them look like they had on bustles. And they were very nice to me, and they Thank told you. me. Thank you very much. Some of them may actually be watching this video. A lot of them knew me and watched the channel and were familiar with what I was doing, which blew my mind, you know. But yeah. they, they all dressed the same and kind of ran together, had similar haircuts or similar hairstyles, similar dress, similar everything. But it was fascinating. Very, very nice people. And my, uh, uh, let's just go back to Finland uh, one more time because we've got, that's that's our sign that we have three minutes left. Um, I highly recommend going to Finland. It was a beautiful, beautiful country. I never felt unsafe there. I traveled a lot by myself. I took bicycles and rode around Finland. Um, I got out and walked and talked to people and walked in and out of places and spent a lot of time just exploring, trying to see all the different things because I knew that I may never go there again. I don't yeah. know. But if I have a chance to go back to Finland, I definitely would. And they have a giant Elvis fan club. In fact, I think there's two Elvis fan clubs over there that are kind of competing. And uh, a, a giant um, amount of people that are Elvis fans there and were just gracious people, just very, very nice. And my, my time in Finland was was fantastic. I had a great time there and would definitely, definitely go back. And if you get to go see the fat policeman in Olu, I highly recommend it. It is a beautiful little town. We ate at um, different restaurants. We ate at a Mexican restaurant in Olu. I remember that. That's in a video. And we tried different stuff. Now, uh, something that they did kind of all over Europe with eggs for breakfast was they would mix milk with the eggs. So when they did scrambled eggs, they mixed it up and put milk in it. So it had a little bit of a different taste than our eggs. But almost everywhere we went, they had that. And um, and I thought it was really good. And they would have bacon. They would have that. They would have – they always had good stuff. Now, they were very simple with their coffee. And what I mean is it would be coffee. And you could have real milk to put in your coffee and sugar cubes. Oh, okay. Coffee at most places. And I really enjoyed it. I like the coffee like that. Now, here – my wife makes the coffee very frou-frou is what we call it. You know, it has to be very sweet for me to, uh, to be able to, to drink it and that kind of stuff. But it was, it was a fun time and I would definitely go back. Me and you need to go to Finland sometime and That'd just cool. travel around and, 
And um, I, I think it's a, a really nice place to visit, and I definitely would love to go back. And because there was all kinds of things because of our travel schedule that I didn't get to see. But because we were playing at night, a lot of days I had time to go spend four or five or six hours at, uh, filming. So yeah. I would just go around every town and try to see things that I've never seen before to kind of capture it for people to see what it's like there. So just a beautiful country. Don't be afraid to go there at all. I highly recommend Finland and friends. We're going to have to, to go now. It's that's 45 minutes. Thank y'all for watching. And Trey, we'll do another one on, let's go back to, let's do part two or let's do the Netherlands and let's talk about all the stuff in the Netherlands. And we could probably even do two more. You never know. You stayed Thank out there so about, much for watching. You stayed I was out there almost a month. Three, a month or two months. Yeah, right? almost a month. Yeah. 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 And I was there a long time and it was a lot of fun. And uh, all I had to do every day was get up, go film after that's, the band stuff was done. That's the life. So there you go. That's the life. Thank y'all so much for watching. Tighten up every chance you get and don't double dribble. And thank y'all so much for watching and listening. Make sure that you go to Globe Trotting with Trey's channel on YouTube and right subscribe there. and start watching the videos. If you haven't seen the videos I'm talking about and you're interested in seeing Europe through the lens of the spa guy, go to the spa guy or go to um, weekly spa guy where I have the longer videos and I do them in hour long things. So it would be something I think would, if you're interested in looking, I show you everything and yeah, I, I even show you some of the stuff with the band. Guys, they're good workout videos. Say you're doing a little workout. You can put your phone up there. Just press Billy's one hour long walking around in Finland video, I think, because that's what I used to do, Billy, when I first started watching you. I would, you that's know, it. do some little workouts and um, just have you playing. Well, they're a lot of fun to make, and it was a lot of fun to experience, but I want to go back soon. Yeah, I do too. All right.